and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video I thought I would talk about a topic that I've been wanting to discuss on my channel for a while now and it is disability in picture books. Now I did actually talk about this a while back. I talked about disability in children's books in general on my channel and it got quite a popular response so I thought I'd come back and do one talking about picture books in specific. So for those of you who don't know I'm actually studying for a master's degree in children's literature and a couple of months ago I was writing a assignment on the representation of disability in picture books so I thought you guys might be interested to know what I found and some of the books that I've discovered that have got disabled characters in them and also my thoughts on disability in picture books. When I was growing up personally, I never found characters with disabilities in picture books. Perhaps I just wasn't looking in the right places or perhaps my school didn't really think it prudent to show that there were disabled characters in picture books. Something that I hear a lot is that the disability community in picture books is a very unrepresented group. And I will definitely agree, it is very unrepresented and it is sometimes not very well represented or the representation is very unfavourable for whatever reason but there is certainly a number of disabled characters in picture books that I have discovered. Now for me personally, throughout my studies the books that I have discovered have predominantly been characters with physical disabilities, with sensory disabilities and I think the reason for this is because some illustrators and artists have claimed that it's very difficult to represent an invisible disability in picture books like that of perhaps a learning difficulty or something that is not immediately visible and I guess it's the idea of how do you portray disability in a picture book and how do you artfully incorporate it into a picture so that it's part of the story. And with disability in picture books there are two key types of literature. The first one is inclusion literature. Now this literature is usually focused towards showing that disabled characters are everyday people and it, as the name would imply it's about including people from the disability community into everyday society and it's about educating children who don't necessarily have disability about disabilities. Now I'd say this is usually literature that's more intended towards the non-disability community because from my personal findings and from discussing this with peers who've got disabilities we would rather read about characters who go on adventures, not read about our disabilities. We don't need to be educated about disability, we know about it quite well enough as it is. So that literature is usually focused towards the non-disability community, I tend to find. And the second type of literature is called immersive literature. Now immersive literature is about a text where there might be a character or several characters who have disabilities. They might not necessarily be the protagonist, they might only be a minor character, they might be a secondary character, they might be the antagonist, but they are present in the book and it is just a part of the story. The disability is not the focal point of the story, so they're there, but that's not the main thing. The disability is only secondary to the plots. And this literature is usually more successful for everybody and it tends to be more popular with the disability community because it's about actually enabling them to go on a journey and to see themselves represented in books but to not feel like they're being pigeonholed. I think that both types of literature have their place and have their purpose. I do prefer immersive literature but alas I've not come across as many books as I'd have liked to that are immersive but certainly I've come across both. And I think both are successful in their own way and I think both are very important to have but I think it's about time that there is equal representation of the two. Now I think with disability it can sometimes be a very taboo subject with children and sometimes children don't really know how to talk about it or sometimes I think the educators don't really know how to bring it up into the conversation. But I think that picture books are a fantastic way of actually enabling children to have an open conversation about disability. So without further ado, I'm going to discuss a few of my different favourite books that have disabled characters in them and why I like them. The first book I want to mention to you is called Lucy's Picture by Nicola Moon. Now this book is about a little girl called Lucy and she basically makes a collage picture for her granddad. Hashtag spoiler alert. But at the end of the book, it's revealed that her grandfather is blind. And that's the reason why she chose to make a tactile collage as opposed to a visual picture. And I think this is a great example of showing how a child who perhaps has a family member or a friend who's got a visual impairment can learn to advocate for them and relay the visual world to them in an accessible way. And it is essentially a book about access and opening up the visual world to someone with sight loss. And I just thought this was a really successful book. And plus, it's the first picture book I have come across that actually has a guide dog in it. So, another reason why I love it. So definitely for me, this has to be one of my favourites. And I think it's a great book for anyone who perhaps has a family member or a friend who's got a visual impairment and they want to learn more about sight loss and the ways that someone with sight loss can access the world and interpret the world. 
Another book that I wanted to mention to you is called The Secret Code by Dana Meech and Rue. And this is about a little boy called Oscar. Now Oscar is blind and he uses Braille. And throughout the book it's essentially about him explaining to a classmate how he uses Braille and what it's for. And dispelling the myth that Braille is essentially a secret code. And that Braille is just the same as what his classmates use but it's just a different way of being able to understand text and to read. And I think this is a really good book for anybody who perhaps is working with a child in a classroom who uses Braille and they want to help their classmates understand what Braille is and what it's for and what it actually does. And I just think this is another example of how you can educate someone about sight loss in a fun way for a picture book. Another book that I really loved is called Sometimes by Rebecca Elliott. Now this is about two siblings, Toby and Clementine, and Clementine happens to have a disability, a physical disability. She uses a wheelchair and she has to go for regular hospital visits. And the book is essentially about their relationship and about how much Toby values and loves his sister and admires her for being such a strong-willed person and for being able to undertake hospital visits and just still be an everyday person and to still be able to play games and invent new worlds. And I just also think the illustrations are beautiful and I just think it's a really sweet book and it definitely does show how the relationship between two siblings can form but regardless of disability. And I just... Another book I want to mention is called The Five of Us by Quinton Blake. I'm not going to talk about this too much because I have mentioned this before in a previous video. This is about five characters, each of which who have a different disability from cognitive to sensory to a physical impairment. And what I love about this book is that it shows how each person with a disability has their own strength. And what this book essentially does is emphasise the power of teamwork over disability by showing that each character has their own individual strength regardless of the disability and how they each use it to their advantage and they could all work collaboratively as a group and work together towards a goal. Susan Laughs by Jean Wills. Now I really like this book because it's about a little girl who is a wheelchair user. However, you don't actually know that until the very end of the book where she is revealed to be in a wheelchair. And it's a very powerful end image where at the end it's revealed that she actually is a wheelchair user. But up to this point you just see her embarking in everyday tasks like going to the park, enjoying being with her family and having fun. And I just think this is a very powerful message to send to children because it's essentially saying that your disability isn't the overriding factor about you and that you are more than a disability but also a disability doesn't have to necessarily be there in the forefront originally and that you can have a disability and you don't have to necessarily see it all the time and I just think this is a really good example of how showing a child essentially that disability is not a defining characteristic of you. Max the Champion by Alexander Strick and Sean Stockdale. Now actually I'm very lucky to know Alexander Strick who's an absolutely wonderful, wonderful lady. She is the co-founder of Inclusive Minds who I'm an ambassador for. And now she co-wrote this book and it's about a boy called Max. Now whilst Max does not have a disability, it's one of the secondary characters in the book, one of his friends who has a disability. What I think this is a really good example is showing how someone with a disability can compete in sport and I think this is a really good example of showing how someone with a disability can still partake in sport and classroom activities without having to be isolated or estranged from the, from the group. I mean take a look at the Rio 2016 Paralympic Games for example. Team GB came back with a phenomenal amount of medal and we did so well at the Paralympics this year including many Paralympians like lovely Lippy Clegg who I'm lucky enough to actually know with a book like this which includes disability into an everyday sports setting without the need to estrange them from the sports environment I think it could really change some attitudes towards disability in sport in children and definitely in the school setting and it could really turn things around so I think this is a really good example of immersive fiction and how it can really work and certainly it's one of my favourite examples of immersive fiction because the disability is there and it's not the focal point of the story but yet it's speaking a very strong and very clear message that disability and sport can and do mix. Mole Sunrise by Jean Wills, again another book with a visual impairment in it and again another book written by Jean Wills. Now this is about a little mole and one day he goes on an adventure with his woodland friends and they take him to see the sunrise but of course because he's blind and he can't see it they used to describe what it looks like to him by synergizing it with other things that mole can experience like touch sound and smell and taste now, i think this would be a really good example to show young children who perhaps know someone with a visual impairment or perhaps you've got a visually impaired young child in your classroom and you really want to help someone understand how visually impaired children understand and see the world and it's another example of how 
but you can advocate for disability and how you can become an advocate for disability and it's a book about inclusion as well it's essentially about a group of people learning how to advocate and include someone with sight loss into their environment and to make them feel included and part of the group. Um, now the final book I want to mention is definitely my all-time favourite that I've discovered and it's called Moses Goes to a Concert by Isaac Millman. Now this is an American book, it was written in the US and it's about a little boy called Moses and he one day goes on a trip with his classmates, all who happen to be deaf, to a orchestra. And during his time there with his classmates, they meet a percussionist who also happens to be deaf. And what the book really successfully does is shows children how sign language is used and what it is. I mean, I couldn't actually show this to the group of children I was working with because it's using American Sign Language and we use British Sign Language and they're different. And I think it's a good example of how you can incorporate elements and cultural aspects of disability into a book in an accessible and in an interesting way because it's really interactive and it teaches a child how they could use sign language. But also I just think this is a really great book because it's dispelling the myth that people with sensory disabilities can't love something that is parallel to their sense that they don't have. If you take me for example, I get a lot of people saying to me, you're a fashion blogger and you're blind, how does that work? Or a, a friend of mine who is a blind artist, she gets a lot of the similar reaction that people say that how can she possibly draw when she's blind? And I think this is a similar kind of thing because it's essentially dispelling the myth that if you're deaf you can't love and have an interest and a career in music, which it clearly does dispel and it, it does in a very successful way. And I just think this is a really good book to help people understand how the hearing loss community communicate and, and I just think it's a really empowering book and it communicates a very strong message in a fun way. So that concludes my video on disability in picture books. I really hope you liked it. I certainly had fun discussing some of my findings throughout my master's project. I really did enjoy doing this. Let me know in the comments if you have come across any characters who've got disabilities in picture books. I would really love to know and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe if you're new to my channel as well and I'll see you guys in my next video. Goodbye!